done here is really the wave of the future. And you know, one of the, the criticisms that are going to occur is that it's unsightly. But any of you who are thinking that, turn around <laughs> and, and look at what it's going to replace. You know, those things are the most ugly, awful things that have ever graced any community. And eventually, it is the goal of this city that they come down because we're not going to need them. And it, it really, the technology is really going at that rate of speed that pretty soon the, these houses can be self-sufficient. Uh, it's going to require some battery storage and, along the way, but until we get there, you're going to be you're going to be paying for this. What? What was the the? I expect to get it paid for within 10 years, at the very minimum. If it blows like every day, like it's supposed to tomorrow, sooner. Now, now look look at the advantage that that will do if we do that in every new home built. It will solve our Section 8 problem. It'll solve our renters' problem because those houses that have these types of devices are, are conducive to hardworking families that want to live there and make it their home because pretty soon it pays for itself and then you start saving money on the, on the electric bill. But for investors who want to invest in a house to rent out, this doesn't make a lot of sense. And so hopefully what we can do in Lancaster is make it mandatory eventually that alternative energy be included in every house. Once we do that, a whole host of problems will, will disappear. Uh, and you're the first. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. You. It's very heartening when capitalism and environmentalism finally meet, and that's what the age that we're in now. And it's particularly heartening when we have a staff and a planning commission represented by Mr. Vos up here that recognize that and that took quick action to make sure that this becomes affordable. Have we done nothing? It would, it would have cost Ms. Malone $8,000 for a permit because that's the old way of thinking. Now under the direction of the council who cut the permit even further than was recommended, it's $123 for the permit to do this. It's a review. This is um, consistent with our general plan, so we're making it very easy for citizens to do the right thing to save money. Um, this is a great day. This, this really is, um, we do lots of press conferences throughout the year. This is one that people will look back on and remember the start. With that, I'd like to ask Ms. Malone to say a couple other words, and then we have the manufacturer installer here who's available for questions as well. Thank you, Ms. Malone. I kept meaning this weekend to look up who said it, but decisions really are made by the people who show up. I wanted to get a permit. I kept talking to the city about it. I saved up the $8,000 and then found out my property wasn't big enough to get the permit anyway. So I kept talking to the city and they set up a meeting with Ms. Randy Davis and there was supposed to be another homeowner there. He didn't show up. I did. I heard that uh, there had been a planning commission meeting and I wanted to show up for that. I found out about it the day after, unfortunately. Uh, I watched it on the internet. Then I kept looking at the agenda for the city council waiting for it and I showed up. <laughs> During the entire process, I kept in touch with Ms. Davis. I kept uh, letting her know that the technology, the WePower technology was being used in other parts of the country it's been on the History Channel, I don't know how many times, on different programs. There's a sign in Times Square that after the rest of the world is gone, will still be lit for five years, only because that's how long the bulbs will last. There will still be electricity because the turbines will still spin. Unfortunately, we have the calmest, weirdest day in Lancaster history for a press conference. It did spin on Saturday. I swear I have video of it. And it's going to be spinning tomorrow if anybody wants to come back and take a picture from the street. But I can't thank the city enough for letting me do this. I saw this technology in the 70s. They were little ground mounted things and they were actually pretty bad because they killed birds because birds couldn't see them. But birds can see this. When it's spinning, it appears as a solid object to a bird and they won't fly into it. It's silent. The old ones weren't. This is going to be here in a hurricane. The ones that they made back in the late 70s and early 80s, they would fly apart at 40 miles an hour. And the technology is evolving. The reason it took three city council votes 
on this ordinance was because this is the second model that I looked at. The first model I looked at was just a little bit smaller in diameter and a little bit shorter. And the permit was originally written for that, so we had to revise the permit to accommodate this one. I can't thank the city enough, and I am so looking forward to my free electricity. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.